Hello, we are going to deal with the copper turnings or the copper filings. From the diagram, you can see that there are two stranges that is A and B. There is the source of it, there is a cotton wool and copper turnings. For this experiment, from what you see, string A, the cotton wool, copper turnings and it all has its functions. As you all know that copper plus oxygen gives you copper to oxide. The function of cotton in the experiment The cotton wool in the experiment copper turning from being blown into the string. Okay, for this the cotton helps so that the syringe is not blown out of the glass tube. Air is passed through the glass tube repeatedly to ensure that all active part of air is used up. Okay, there's a question that always arises that why is air fast passed through the copper turnings before it's heated? So, the main function of that is that the air is passed through the glass tube repeatedly to ensure that the active part of air is reduced up. Passing air through the glass tube slowly allows enough time contact between the active part of and the heated copper tannins. Color changes from brown to black due to reaction of brown copper metal with oxygen to form copper 2 oxide. Okay, copper 2 oxide is black. Copper solid, which is now the metal itself, is always brown. So when you pass this, the oxygen through copper, will always come up with copper 2 oxide which is always brown. The reaction reduces the amount of volume of oxygen in strength B, leaving the inactive part of air. Because copper only reacts with oxygen when heated, the percentage of active part of air is theoretically higher because not all the active part of air react with copper. If the copper turnings are replaced with magnesium shavings, the percentage of active part of air obtained is extraordinary, very high because magnesium is more reactive than copper. This is this is the reactivity series. We'll always find it. I guess at the end of this chapter, we'll find the reactivity series. But magnesium, sodium is more reactive than magnesium. Magnesium is more reactive than copper. Yeah, and the reaction is exothermic. Hence, generate enough heat for magnesium to react with both oxygen and nitrogen in air. Magnesium, since magnesium is very reactive, it reacts with oxygen to give you magnesium oxide. And magnesium reacts with nitrogen to give you magnesium nitride. The ID, IDE gives you that it's two compounds, that is magnesium and nitrogen that has been combined. We are going to use the alkaline pyrogel. That says that the color of pyrogel 1, 2, that changes to brown. This is because oxygen gas is absorbed by alkaline pyrogel 1, 2. Okay, you can ignore that, but it's not that essential. Okay, testing the presence of carbon 4 oxide in with using the lime water. From this diagram, we can see that there, there is a conical flask. Uh -huh. There is water, there is an empty flask. There is a paper cover, fresh lime water. Okay, the function of the paper is to ensure that no air enters the lime water. When the water enters the flask it forces the air okay when water enters the water flask so you can all see the water flask when water enters the flask it pushes the air that is inside the flask to go to the tube where there is the fresh lime water and then when it goes there if there is presence of carbon four oxide there will always be a white precipitate a white precipitate is formed the white precipitate dissolves in prolonged bubbling of air if you continuously bubble excess air, will all the the white precipitate will always dissolve, and the white precipitate is calcium hydroxide. Isn't it? 
Yeah, the lime water is calcium hydroxide. The white precipitate is formed as calcium carbonate. Calcium hydroxide plus the carbon four oxide will always get calcium carbonate in water. Then when you take the calcium carbonate in excess, you'll always get calcium carbonate, which is solid and water. That's why the white precipitate dissolves. And also, this will get to in, I guess, radicals or no, salts. Where you will find that all carbonates are soluble except calcium and barium. Yeah, when the white precipitate dissolved in solution is formed is calcium hydrogen carbonate. Calcium hydrogen carbonate plus water plus CO2 will give you calcium hydrogen carbonate. Carbon four oxide forms a white precipitate with water with lime water that dissolves in excess gas. Okay, we are going to look at the laboratory preparation of oxygen. Okay, <clears throat> oxygen is covers most of the earth, 50%, and then about 70% of the earth is made up of water, and is made, uh, is made up of water, which is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. And about 20% of the volume of atmospheric gases is oxygen that from the active part of air. Mm, yeah, but the 50% is the oxygen combined with other element oxide or metal. And we go to the laboratory preparation of oxygen. If there is one we are using sodium hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. Here is, here is the here is the diagram as you can all see. There's a round bottom flask, there's a dropping funnel, we have hydrogen peroxide on the dropping funnel, we have the water, yeah, we have a glass rod or what we can yeah, we with the glass rod. Mm -hmm. Important notes. And we have magnesium four oxide. When hydrogen peroxide is dropped, okay, when you open the dropper, you can all see that it has a control on funnel. When you drop it to magnesium oxide, there's an effervescence. Effervescence. That's that there is some bubbling, the fizzing sound or cars. Okay. The cars produced is colorless and odorless. The method of gas collection can be referred as over water or upward delivery. Reason as to why this method is 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 preferred is because it's insoluble. In the gas can be collected through this method above because it's only slightly soluble in water. Then magnesium 4 oxide is usually used as a catalyst in the reaction. Okay, what's a catalyst class? A catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction but remains chemically at change at the end of the reaction. Or you can also say that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of reaction and it's not used up in the reaction. Hydrogen peroxide decomposes slowly to form water and oxygen gas. A little magnesium 4 oxide speeds up the rate of decomposition by reducing the time taken for a given volume of oxygen to be produced. The equation for the reaction is we can see the hydrogen peroxide decomposed to water and oxygen. And you can write hydrogen peroxide as H2O2 decomposed to form water and oxygen. When you lower a glowing splint into the gas jar contained, the gas jar, jar well, the gas that has been obtained is oxygen. So if you lower a glowing splint, the glowing splint will rekindle, as in it will light. You will see it glow. Okay, oxygen relights or rekindles a glowing splint, which is confirmatory test of the presence of oxygen gas. We can also use sodium peroxide. But now you have to know the difference. When you use hydrogen peroxide, you need mag manganese 4 oxide. So you have all seen, you need manganese 4 oxide. 
But when you come sodium, to sodium peroxide, now the dropping funnel we have water. And the other part we had hydrogen peroxide. You may you have to make you have to see the difference that the sodium peroxide here is inside the round bottom flask. And what is on top is water. But the other one, this one, the above one, you have the hydrogen peroxide on the dropping funnel and manganese 4 oxide in the round bottom flask. I hope you are, you are seeing the difference. When the water, the dropping funnel is open, you will always see an evaporation that or the freezing of and water is added into the flask with sodium hydroxide. A colorless gas will be produced. What will make you know that there is a gas that will be produced is the presence of bubbles inside there.